You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. Um, right now, it's like Nigerians are being uh, served breakfast, as it were, even though this program is breakfast. So I just remembered that uh, everybody will, will, will be served breakfast last, last. That's what we're experiencing in Nigeria. Families are facing tough times. Friends are facing tough times. Students are facing, facing uh, tough times. Everybody is facing some kind of tough time or the other, maybe except the National Assembly members and those in government. But as it is, if you're an ordinary Nigerian, you must be facing tough times. Because even if you have a domestic servant uh, in your house and you're so well to do, and the domestic servant is facing so much tough times, you don't know what it does to the mental health of that person and you don't know how safe you are from the person that is helping you in house chores and all those kind of things. Inflation has gone seven year high right now. Nigerians are facing these tough times. And we're being joined right now to, by uh, Nick Agule, uh, our regular on the show. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, Nick. Uh, good morning and good morning to our viewers uh, globally. Yeah, everybody is now saying, uh, I would like to be like Nick, that I can go to the UK when I like and come back to Nigeria when I like. And that is well, well, that is life. That is life in retirement. Yeah. When, when you are a retiree, uh, you have the freedom to do that. But a retiree in Nigeria or a retiree elsewhere? Because when you talk about retirees, people in Nigeria don't even want to retire because they are afraid. Mm -hmm. They may not even have their entitlements. Yes, uh, I'm a retiree, uh, both in Nigeria and here in the UK. Uh, I'm privileged. I have got three pensions. So uh, I thank God that I'm able to, to fend for myself because times are really tough, especially in Nigeria. Okay, well, uh, we will assume a lot of things, but not, that's not to say <laughs> right here. But now, seven-year high inflation, and the headline is Nigerians are facing tough times. Let's, let's hear how you project that the situation is going to be, maybe in the next six months uh, from now. Uh, I agree with you uh, totally. Nigerians are really facing tough times, really tough times. Because yesterday, we woke up to fuel price being hiked from about 500 plus to about 617, uh, even in some places 630, as, as much as 650. And to consider that uh, the, the fuel price was uh, uh, 180, 190 uh, back here uh, at the end of May, even in June, early June, when this new government uh, had just taken power. And today, we're in July, and the price has moved from 180, 190 to 600 and something, trying to touch 700. You can't even believe how Nigerians are surviving with this kind of thing because uh, this is this is one of the feeders of inflation in Nigeria because uh, petrol uh, affects a lot of things. You know, ordinarily in a place like uh, in the UK here where I am, petrol won't affect many things except for transportation. But in Nigeria, you use petrol for for generation of power. And in all the businesses that have to use petrol now at this high cost to generate power for their businesses are going to hike the prices. So Nigerians are facing really tough times. The, 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 the foreign exchange rate has moved from the central bank official rate of about 450 to a dollar now is over 800 naira a dollar. You know, so there's so much that is being thrown at Nigerians. And my worry is that I'm not hearing voices from the government in terms of what is being done to ease the pains, to ameliorate the pains, to, to, to give Nigerians a sense of hope that something is being done. It's not just about throwing these things at Nigerians and expecting that they can absorb it. You know, there has to be, on the other side, a particular actions that need to be taken by government that will ensure that the, the pains are lessened and we are going to have 
uh, you know, the purchasing power that we, we, we give Nigerians the basic necessities that they are looking for. Well, it's, it's really terrible. But it, when it comes to inflation, um, let's help us understand some of the things that lead to this kind of inflation going up. You've mentioned some of these things, but let's know more. Uh, maybe we are just assuming that the people in power know what to do. But let's keep telling them that these are some of the things that cause inflation. And uh, because of inflation, the livelihood of people is is going down and down and down all the time. So let's list these things out for the people who are watching us now to know. And uh, thank you very much. So inflation is caused by two factors. Inflation is so so let's let's define inflation. What is inflation? Inflation is a persistent rise in the prices of goods and services that people consume. Yeah? So like petrol was 180, 190, then it became 500 and something. Today it is 600 and something. There is inflation in the price of petrol. That's what it is. What are the causative factors of inflation? There are two, two factors. The first factor is demand. If people are demanding a product more than the supply of that product, the price of that product will tend to rise. That is just the basic fact. The second factor is cost. If producers of goods and services are experiencing increasing cost, they are going to transfer those costs to the consumers. Because if they don't transfer those costs to the consumers, they will start making losses. So inflation can also arise from producers of goods and services experiencing higher cost of input which they now transfer into the prices. And that is why in economics, I'm not an economist, but I did a lot of economics. I, I'm, I'm an accountant, I'm a chartered accountant, but I did a lot of economics. So I'm able to say something authoritatively on this, that in economics is what we call demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. So the demand pull inflation is the inflation that is generated because People have so much money and they are chasing too few goods. So if you look at the inflation in the price of the dollar, it is a demand pool inflation. Why? Because Nigerians are perpetually demanding the dollar for whatever import they want to do. And since Naira is the one chasing the dollar, the price of the dollar keeps going up, meaning you need to pay more Naira to get one dollar. You need to pay more naira to get one dollar. That is demand pull inflation. On the cost on the cost push inflation, as we can see in Nigeria now, the cost of input into uh, the goods and services that producers are actually producing for Nigerians to consume is rising. And where are the rising costs coming from? Number one, the rising cost is coming from foreign exchange. So if you imported generators and you have this generator that cost one thousand dollars as at um, may this year you went to the central bank you got dollar at 450 naira that will mean you brought that generator in at a cost of four hundred and fifty thousand. today if you return to go and get the dollar you have to buy pay 800 naira to get the dollar so the cost of that generator will automatically now jump from the 400 and something you bought it to 800 and something. The dollar itself has remained 1,000, but you are now experiencing forest crisis. So you will have to transfer that 800 and something now into the eventual price that you are going to sell that generator for. So the cost is going to go up. The second thing that increases the cost of, um, of goods and services as we see, is interest rates. And this is why we had issues with the former central bank uh, 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 governor, the, the, the governor, a mefele led central bank. They continuously kept increasing interest rates to curtail inflation without knowing that Nigeria's inflation is cost push. It's not demand pool because Nigerians don't even have money to go and buy anything. There are people who are working 
that are not being paid. And those who are being paid, they are being paid peanuts. You know, I mean, minimum wages are 30,000. Just imagine that, 30,000, you know? So, so Nigerians don't even have the money to go and buy. The inflation Nigeria is suffering is cost push inflation. But the Godwin MFLA led central bank kept increasing interest rate to curtail inflation. And once we increase interest rate, it means that producers of goods and services are going to pay higher interest on the borrowings that they are making from the banks. And they will transfer that higher interest into the prices of the goods and services that they are producing. And that is even going to push the inflation up more. You know, then of course, the, the cost of input that people are making they, is going to push up their inflation because, uh, you know, we have failed to develop our local production uh, base. So we're importing almost everything to bring it to Nigeria. <clears throat> and what that, that means is that uh, as, the, as the foreign exchange is, is deteriorating, as the, as the Naira now uh, is deteriorating in value against the dollar, the, 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 the importers of wheat for, for, for baking bread, of spare parts, of motor vehicles, of medicines, of food, of petrol, of all those things that were important. The prices are not going to be going up because the dollar, uh, the Naira is deteriorating against the dollar. So these are some of the factors that are causing inflation in Nigeria. But in summary, I am saying Nigeria's inflation is cost push more than demand pull. And I expect the Central Bank of, of Nigeria to understand that because you don't use hike in interest rate to solve cost push inflation. Instead, you look at the causative factors on why those costs are rising and you deal with them. So, okay. for instance, petrol. Go ahead. To deal with the rising cost of petrol is to remove Nigerians from using dollar to buy petrol. So that we can uh, uh, refine our petrol locally. If we refine our petrol locally, it then means we produce crude oil, we push the crude oil into the refineries in Nigeria, they produce petrol in food for Nigerians. The problem that petrol is rising in cost now is that we have allowed our refineries to die, so we are using the dollar to go and bring in petrol. And as the value of the dollar is strengthening against the Naira, the price of petrol will continue going up. So that is how you solve a cost push inflation. That is just an example. You deal with the causative factor of the cost and not increasing interest rate, which in itself adds to the cost of manufacturing goods and services, which is also inflationary. Uh, well, inflation has reached more than 20% as we speak right now. Uh, but when you talked about the dollar, I was just wondering, there is a story on the Dacian newspaper this morning, and the headline is that UK agency okays Naira for trade financing. Is this going to give us some kind of relief of the Naira against the dollar? I think I saw the headline. I saw the headline of that story, but I have not uh, read the details of the story. Uh, I, I don't believe that story. Why I don't believe that story is that it's not making any headline in any of the UK tabloids or uh, national TV networks. Uh, a, a, a new story like that, if it was an official thing from government, it will make it onto the headlines in the UK here. I watch TV every day and I haven't seen that. And the reason why I, I don't think this story is uh, probably not true is that if the UK okays the payment on Naira, for the goods and services that we, uh, we not, not the the government. Government. I will give you a very simple example. School fees. School fees is one of the biggest um, uh, costs that Nigerians face in, in, in pound sterling because they, they, they are, they are, they are, their children are here, they are here. Thousands of children, Nigerian children are here, paying school fees, probably an average of 16,000 pounds a, a year, 20,000, depending on the cost. The medical studies, you pay 20 something thousand pounds a year. Uh, which by today's rate is like 20 million per year school fees. You are not talked about accommodation and the upkeep of the child. So let us now say uh, the UK universities are now accepting Naira for payment of school fees. When the UK university accepts Naira from Nigerian parents, the big question is what is that UK university going to do with that Naira? What are they going to do with it? Do you understand? So are they going to pay their lecturers in Naira? 
Are they going to, 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 to pay for their electricity, pay for their rent or anything in Naira? Yeah, they can't do that. That is the reason why they will not accept Naira from you. If you come to the UK now to buy uh, generators, for instance, and the UK manufacturer accepts uh, Naira from you and gives you a uh, generator to take to Nigeria, would the UK manufacturer use that Naira to go and buy the, 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 the input that they use in manufacturing the generator? Answer is no. So I don't think that headline makes meaning. It doesn't make meaning. But if, you are, if your currency is convertible, for instance, an American importer can pay to a UK exporter dollars, and they would accept it. They will accept it because when they take that dollars, they can easily convert that dollars to pounds. And that's why we say a currency is convertible. If a currency is convertible, then you can do business in the local currency. But if a currency like Naira is not, is not convertible, nobody's going to accept it from you. What I'm saying here is that if I take dollars now and just walk down the street to my high street here, and I give the dollar to a bureau the change, they will give me pounds. But if I take Naira and show to that bureau the change now, the man will look at me and say, is this man crazy? You understand know what I mean? So that story, I can assure you, has no foundation. Well, um, some of the details that we have is that under the arrangements, UK will provide up to 85% of funding for projects containing at least 20% of British content. The Naira financing will follow the same structure as someone buying in sterling, except that Nigerian firms taking out a loan in the local currency can benefit from a UK government-backed guarantee. That's what, uh, those are some of the details that they said. And in fairness, the headline said a UK agency, uh, not UK government. I don't know anyway if it is possible for an agency to okay that kind of trading between countries or it has to be the government that will do that before it can hold water. But this is what they said about uh, the currency. Now, having you know, said... You know the, way, the way this kind of thing will happen is this. The solution to all these things is local production. Local production. As we in Nigeria now, we decided that we are going to unlock value from our rich agricultural land. Because the UK does not have enough land to do farming. UK imports a lot of their food. So if Nigeria decides that we are going to put a tractor on each available piece of land in Nigeria, and impact on, a, on, on an industrial agriculture. And Nigeria now begins to produce food in plenty food. So that the UK is now coming to Nigeria to buy food. An arrangement like that will work. Because what, the, what then that happens is that if a UK university, for instance, takes Naira from Nigerian students as school fees, the UK university can use the Naira now to buy food in Nigeria and export it to the UK, you know? So th that is the kind of thing that, that will work. You know, there are other things like, you know, like here in the UK, if you pick your phone call, your phone now, to call any of your service providers, let's say you want to call your electricity company, your gas company, your water company, your telephone company, the person that is going to answer that call is in India, is in, is in Malaysia, is in Singapore, is in the Philippines. And it means then that the, the companies here in the UK need the local currency in those countries to pay their business center employees who are there. If Nigeria takes advantage of something as simple as that, meaning we now have created an economy that is secured enough, that is transparent enough, that is properly powered with electricity, and the big companies in the UK come to Nigeria, set up business centers, employ the young and vibrant Nigerians in their business centers. Those companies will need Naira to pay those employees. So those companies will be able to take Naira from Nigerian companies doing business with them in exchange so that they can now use that Naira to pay their local cost. Okay. So we just have to uh, produce uh, our, our goods and services locally to attract people to come and buy. And then they will, they will start looking for Naira 
to pay for those goods and services. And it's the only way that the Naira can strengthen. Arrangements like what we're discussing here are very artificial. They are not fundamental. They can't deal with the matter. All right. Thank you so much, Nick Agule, for always, like always, coming through uh, today and being a part of this program. There's the much we can take on this segment. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And uh, Nigerians, uh, uh, please, um, the times are hard, but let's keep hope alive that things will get better. Mm, amen to that. Okay, we've been talking with Nika Gule, a public affairs analyst, talking to us from the UK. And we'll take a short break, look at the weather, come back to discuss our next hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>